2020 was when I started to take art more seriously. I've been drawing since I was a child and it was always something I'd do in my free time, but just for fun. And I wasn't really focused on improving on it. I even went to a personal art school but there I just draw whatever I wanted to. Well, it's definitely important to draw what you want to and just have fun with it in the beginning. If your goal is not just that, but to get better at drawing and to be able to draw what you want more accurately, studying art is the way to go. But what is the best way to approach this? How do you study art the best and most effective way so it fits your own personal goals? How much do you need to know and how much time should you spend on this? This video should provide you with some answers. First, where do you even get your information? For me, I learned from YouTube because there's tons of content here. I study animation at college, but my art knowledge comes from YouTube videos. All the things I learned about art or animation in university were things I already knew about and also found on YouTube. So to me, it seems completely possible to learn about art this way, except for the practical experience of working on a project. But if you want something more in depth or structured, there are also a lot of online courses or you can also go to art school if you want to. But for me, I'll stick to YouTube. Next, how much time should you spend on studying? I created my own schedule to study different topics. I focus on one thing at a time and move on after some time. You can choose how long you want to spend learning about one topic, but to me it makes no sense to just keep learning one topic until you've perfected it, since in art you'll never be able to get it perfectly. You can always improve and even artists that are very skilled usually also want to keep improving and see flaws in their art. And the very basics of learning art are about the fundamentals like form, perspective and so on. I created playlists with different videos from different artists for each of those fundamentals to study them. And what I do is I watch a few videos per day, not too much, since I also have to balance university work and own projects where I apply what I learned as well. Don't overwhelm yourself, which can result in burnout and loss of motivation, but also, especially if you're studying art on your own, know that it's your own responsibility to take some time in your day for studying. Here I quickly show my own notion calendar and what I do is I have around 30 minutes to one hour of video material per day and it takes me one to two hours to get through those since I draw along, stop the video sometimes and take notes. And you see that on some days I don't have any of the videos scheduled. That is because I leave some time in the morning in my daily routine for studying art and there are some days where I have to wait for university and so on. On those days I don't watch videos to also have enough time to do all the other things I want to and have to do. Now next, let's go to the main question of this video and this is also where I share the most important things I think I learned. Over time, what is the best way to study? I talk about what I learned works for me and this doesn't have to apply to you, but overall you should be able to figure out what's the most effective for you to study from this. What I found out is that I learn the most when I study the way I also studied in school. If you know how you get information into your brain from there, you can apply this here. In general, it's a good idea to ask yourself the question, are you more of a theoretical person? Do you need to know how something works in your mind? Does it have to make sense to you? And do you like rules you can put into words? Or are you more of a practical person? Do you need to really experience something and do it yourself to understand how it works? Answer this question for yourself, but you should also include both things when studying art. You can just adjust the ratio depending on what you find most effective for yourself. For me, I'm more of a theoretical person in general. I used to write long study notes and just go through notes in my head. And I would often just learn the rules instead of, for example, in math doing lots of practice exercises or in English writing texts myself and apply to art. The way I learn from videos now is that while watching the video, I have a piece of paper in front of mm -hmm. me, mostly back pages where one side is empty. On this paper, I sketch what is in the video, what the video is about, or I write things down, depending on what helps me to get what the person in the video is saying into my head. And this is very messy for me, just like in school when I was 
taking notes and doodling. And after watching the video, I have a notebook in which I then write everything down, make sketches to visualize the things again. I try to make this more organized. It mostly doesn't turn out that way though, but at least I use different colors here. Yeah, and I write down all the things I want to take from the different videos I watch in there. This is more of the theoretical part to me. And then for the practical part, while I apply what I learned when I'm taking the notes, I also make sure to reflect what I did when I'm working on my personal art. What helps me here is either keeping my notebook open on the, on the page I wrote on that day laying next to me. So while I'm drawing, I can look at it and think about what's in there and if it is applied in my art. Or what you can do as well is keep a small checklist of a few of the most helpful tips you've learned about recently and keep checking if you have these points included in your art. When you feel like you're used to applying one of the things and thinking about it while drawing, you can also take things off of the list. Uh, then something I also realized in school is that having visuals, for me having visuals in general like diagrams really helped me with learning something. After making my own study notes, I noticed that often what I recall in my head is the paper itself and how the words written on it and visuals looked instead of just the content. This can also help with getting to know how you learn best. If you prefer to work in a more text-based way, just writing things down and recalling that information in words or having visuals you can recall. I remember that at some point in school we were talking about different types of people. Some recall what they write, see, hear or say the best. And for me it's probably see and write. And for art, especially visuals, will be most helpful probably. This whole approach of learning and studying art is pretty new to me. I only started this a few months ago. What I used to do before that basically for my whole life was to just draw from different images using fold studies and pose references, doing pose and fold studies. But back then I didn't write something down. I basically just focused on how the things looked and not understanding the theory behind it. Well, it's good to draw from references to learn, especially for observation and learning things through repetition. Doing this kind of mindlessly drawing and only thinking about outlines is definitely not as effective as trying to understand a structure behind the things you're drawing. It's what the fundamentals are there for. It's to help you give a basic understanding you can apply in all kinds of art. Unlike drawing from a reference, there you just focus on what is in the reference. And I really noticed the difference this approach to studying made for myself. While I still draw from references and do some fold studies sometimes, now I'm focused on learning the fundamentals really and understanding them. And finally, I mentioned some tips for studying art that would have helped me a lot when I started out wanting to improve. If you are also using YouTube like me or maybe you have art books and sources from the internet, I'd recommend first going through many kinds of artists for the topic you're studying and then choosing which artists you like the most and whose art you think is close to what you want your art to look like and apply especially what you learn from them. In Notion I have the videos in my calendar and if the video is especially helpful to me, I mark it so I can come back to it. And for example, when you're going through many eye tutorials, you can find the one that fits to the way you want to draw eyes or S similar to it and focus on learning from this artist. And next tip, you don't have to include everything you learn. Just take what you want and find helpful for your own art. I found that there's a difference between the general rules, like the fundamentals. For example, when you have symmetry, most artists want to be able to draw nice looking people and symmetry applies to all kinds of styles here. A symmetrical face will look nicer to the human eye most of the time. But then on the other side there are stylistic choices, like how big are the eyes and how are they placed. For this, each artist is very unique. While there are some guidelines many artists follow similarly, you can play around a lot here and it's a good idea to find your own way of doing things and not just copy something from one artist or just using the fundamentals. Next, I found that it's often small tips that can really help in the long run. Adding up all the small tips and remembering them by applying them is what leads to improvement. 
Often when you draw, it's about how many of the tips you can keep in mind and apply for your own art. For example, for the body for me, I started out with really only focusing on the outline. Then I learned that the head and upper body are around as long as the legs. I implemented that every time I drew bodies. Next I learned about how the upper and lower arm or the upper and lower leg are around the same size. And then that the elbows tend to be around where the waist is standing in a very generic pose and the hands are slightly lower than the hips. Then I learned about using guides or shapes for the torso and lines for the arms and over time you're just building more and more on top of each other and applying it which then leads to improvement in your art. And finally my last tip is if you're splitting your studying up into different topics after you've gone through many videos for one topic or all the sources of information and you want to move on to the next you can go through all the notes for that one topic and kind of evaluate it you can also write down what you still struggle with the most from this topic and what you find easy now maybe so that later on you can focus on improving that one part of what you learned especially and in general Going through all the things again helps a lot with compressing all the information into what you find most useful and you can then really focus on the parts that are most important to you. I plan to do this by also sharing what I learned about the different topics and fundamentals and videos. I want to summarize what's most helpful to me and teach it to others to also understand those things better. Overall, what I plan to do is go through all the videos and the playlists I created and learn from them. And then I want to share the most helpful things to me by also referring to the artists I learned from. If you're interested in hearing these things, you can look forward to this series I plan on doing throughout this year. I hope this video was helpful to you and I wish you a good time on your art journey. Thanks for watching the video and have a great day. Goodbye.